Greetings, YouTubers. I'm Rick, the tech enthusiast here with the next Elegoo lesson number 23, Thermometer. In this lesson, we'll cover the thermistor device provided in the kit and run a modified version of the tutorial, which will include some data smoothing to demonstrate the functionality. So let's start building. The thermistor provided in the kit looks like a small black capacitor, but this device is a thermal resistor, a resistor that varies with temperature. And unlike typical resistors, whose values might change a tiny bit with temperature, thermistors are made so their resistance values dramatically change with every degree. Unfortunately, the variation is not linear, but rather a curve that looks like this. Here's a sample NTC curve. The shape of the curve is called the beta, and its relationship is between resistance and temperature. Since I brought it up, there are two types of thermistors, NTC or negative temperature coefficient and PTC or positive temperature coefficient. NTCs decrease in resistance as temperature increases, and they are typically used for temperature measurement. PTCs, on the other hand, perform just the opposite. They increase in resistance as temperature increases and are often used as resettable fuses. The thermistor provided in the kit looks to be an NTC version MF52103F3950 based on the data sheet included, but there's no markings to indicate one way or another. If it's really this component, the resistance at 25C should be around 10 kilo ohms with a tolerance of plus or minus 1% and the beta value being 3550. These values are key to calculating approximate temperature values. There are two approaches to calculating temperature. First, there's the more accurate Steinhardt Hart equation, where we need to calculate the Steinhardt Hart coefficients A, B, and C. Then there's the beta approximation that uses the beta value and approximates the temperature value based on the single temperature reference value. You can easily find information on the web about the Steinhardt Hart equation and some additional equations to calculate the ABC coefficients. And here's a spreadsheet I made to calculate these values. So here we have my Steinhardt Hart coefficient calculator. Uh, it's based on the equations you can find here on Wikipedia. What we need to calculate the ABC values for the Steinhardt coefficient calculator is we need three temperature readings and three resistance readings. So we already have a predefined uh, resistance of 10 kilo ohms at 25 degrees Celsius. And so then we typically pick two other temperature readings which I will pick 50 because usually beta is defined between the, the difference of resistance between 25 degrees Celsius and 50 degrees Celsius. And then I'll just choose zero as uh, the other temperature. Initially is because I could take an ice cube, put it with a little bit of water uh, and allow it to get to um, 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And that would allow me to kind of double check some of my numbers here. So to get the 50 degrees, what I did was I, I kind of cheated. I, I used the beta calculator using the, what we believe is the beta value for this particular thermistor and the resistance at um, 25 degrees Celsius, which would be the first temperature value. And then we would come up with the second temperature value. And then it results in a resistance value of 3588.2. And then I would plug in the 3588.2 as the third resistance values. Now then it would then calculate the beta value based on these numbers. It runs through the different calculations for uh, making all these different constants values for the equation. And then it finally results in the ABC coefficients that I can use uh, for our equation in the Arduino sketch. Now these are the values that I got from the original tutorial and they, they were nothing close to what I was getting for my calculated values. And then I have this, uh, this 
temperature calculator, which is sort of like a, uh, a sanity check. So if I put a thousand or ten, sorry, 10,000 ohms in here, it automatically calculates at what temperature this should be and what the Celsius is. So that's kind of shows that by putting 10,000 here, it's just a, a quick check to see if that kind of worked. Anyway, so with a beta of 3950, since I didn't come up with the same numbers, I decided to go to the manufacturer's data sheet and look up all the different other beta values they offered. And so I went through one at a time to check what those values were and compare those to um, the value that was provided in the, the tutorial. And uh, I didn't come up with anything that was close to the value that they had in the tutorial. I went ahead and just kept using the values that I calculated and it seems to be working in the sketch, which you'll see here soon. Anyway, that's the reason why I decided to use my ABC values, my Steinhardt heart coefficients versus using the one that was provided in the tutorial. The tutorial and the data sheet might have a few more details, so it's always a good idea to take a look at them. For this lesson, you'll need the following items from your kit. The Elegoo Uno R3 board. The 1602A LCD module. The thermistor. A 10K potentiometer. A 10 kilo ohm resistor. A 220 ohm resistor. And a bunch of jumper wires. On page 158, you'll see the following schematic. If you recall, I changed this in lesson 22, so we'll be using my revised schematic. The LCD is arranged the same way as in lesson 22, and the thermistor and the 10 kilo ohm resistor will be connected in series from power to ground, acting like a voltage divider. A jumper will be connected to the location where they meet and up to pin A0. On page 159, you'll see the wiring diagram. And here's my revised layout. Here you can see the series connected thermistor and 10 kilo ohm resistor. Between the two, the voltage level will be measured by the pin A0. On page 161, there's a photo. And here's my photo. The little pre-made jumper wires help keep things kind of neat and tidy. Okay, let's move on to the code. This time, I'm going to jump straight into the modified code. The code includes some I2C LCD support if you want to switch to the I2C LCD module adapter. Just comment out the standard lines and uncomment the I2C lines. The sketch for the LCD is almost the same as lesson 22. There's the included liquid crystal display library, the global constants to define the LCD pins, and instantiating the LCD. We'll include the following other constants. We'll define the constants for the thermistor pin to A0, the measured resistor 2 ohm value, then the number of samples that I plan on keeping in our little array. I'll explain more on that later. Oh, and I calculated that 30 is the maximum number of samples that can be stored in an integer. Then there's an Amax value, which is the maximum analog value read from an analog pin, which is 123. We have the temperature at 25 degrees C converted to Kelvin. The thermistor's resistance at 25 degrees C. The thermistor's beta value. And finally, the Steinhardt's coefficient values A, B, and C, which we showed and calculated in the spreadsheet. So rather than burying all these values in the code and equations, I hope that by having them here, anyone could read and figure out what the code was doing and adjust it for their needs. Okay, then I have these three global variables. An array value to store the analog samples, an integer index, and an integer total. The void setup starts the LCD. Again, 
you can change this by commenting or uncommenting some of the lines if you're using the I squared C module. Then the array values are initialized by first getting an analog value of the thermistor pin. A for loop sets all the array values to this initial value, and the total is set to the initial value multiplied by the sample number. What I'm doing here is creating the initial sample weight. And as additional samples are read, the old one is, uh, or an old value is deleted. And the overall value slowly changes to the new value. This keeps the measured temperature from being erratic and has a smoothing effect on the readings. I'll talk about more of this later. The void loop has been simplified at least simplified from Lesson 23's tutorial. It starts by calling a function to read the thermistor, which will return a value in Celsius, and assigns the value to a float T Celsius. The next line calls a function display temperature and passes the parameter T Celsius. There's a small delay and then it loops. Simple. The function float read thermistor's job is to read the thermistor and calculate the temperature. As part of the smoothing technique, the first line deletes the oldest value within the array A values from the global integer total using the index value. Index at this point is set to zero. It then reads the thermistor analog pin and sets the array A value using the same index value. It adds this value back into the global integer total. So the new total value or the weight has either increased or decreased by this new reading. Then it increments the index, getting it ready for the next time. And if the index is greater than or equal to the sample number, the index is reset to zero. Finally, we calculate the average value based on the new total. The average value is used to calculate the thermistor resistance based upon the known voltage divider values. Then it calculates the temperature in Kelvin using the Steinhardt equation and coefficients. That value is converted to Celsius and returned to the void loop. The commented lines here are the equation and values provided by the tutorial. Perhaps they were calculated based on measured values, but I couldn't confirm them, so I just included here as a reference. The display temperature function takes the temperature value in Celsius and converts it to Fahrenheit. Then it prints the Celsius in the first row and Fahrenheit on the second. That's it, super simple. Let's upload the code and check it out. Okay, as you can see here, we have the Elogu uh, Uno R3 and the uh, LCD right here, the little 10 kilo ohm potentiometer, the 220 ohm resistor going to the LCD, to the anode. We have the thermistor right here and the little uh, 10 kilo ohm resistor right here. And there's uh, a little jumper that we can show. It's from the positive uh, five volt bus. And then down here we have the ground rail. Um, here we have uh, the pin from A0 that it then jumps over and connects to the, the voltage divider network that's created between the thermistor and the resistor. Now I did add this little uh, switch here and all this is to show that if you push this little button, it gets very bright. And that's to kind of show the LCD, whether or not you use the 220 ohm resistor. Uh, here I have it in working and if I push the little button, I bypass it. And that's all that is. Uh, not required for the circuit, I just thought it was uh, interesting to include it. Uh, here we have the uh, the connections for the RS, I believe, that comes jumps over to the middle of the breadboard here and then goes over to RS. And then we have E that go, jumps up and connects to pin 11. 
Alrighty, and as you can see, here's the temperature. And it provides the degree Celsius, the little symbol in C, and the converted Fahrenheit, uh, the degree Celsius, uh, sorry, the degree symbol, and F. And that's it. And, and as you can see, it doesn't jump around a whole lot because we're using this weighted smoothing uh, function in, within the Arduino code. Uh, so we have a very stable temperature output. Excellent. I think it's working really well. Oh, let's try the, uh, I'll touch it here. You can see it, it does jump up slowly. You can see it slowly increases. That's because of the weight of the samples that we use. And if I let go, my hot hands uh, should, uh, should cool off and then start falling back down again. Yes, there you go. And giving it a few seconds will uh, allow it to return back to the normal cold temperature here in the basement, <laughs> about 68 degrees. Anyway, that's it. Worked really well. I'm pretty pleased. Well, that's it for this lesson. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little about the thermistor and using it as a thermometer. If you like this sketch, be sure to let me know in the comments section below. I'll have additional links for other interesting videos and code for this project in the show notes below. Join me next time for lesson 24, 8 LED with 74HC595. And if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe. Thanks and see you next time.